So it's Saturday morning, we've established what's wrong with this engine and uh, we're going to have to take the engine out. So everybody has been asking for this video on how to remove a 300 TDI engine. Now unfortunately because it's disabled, it's going to be a real struggle to get onto the lift to get underneath. So we've left it jacked up from when I took the oil pan off when we found out the uh, bearing was gone. So we've cleaned up underneath and today I've got my friend Curtis <laughs> here with the oldest apprentice in town and we're going to, just for a bit of moral support and a hand but we're going to take this out because we don't know about this air conditioning so that's going to be a bit of a problem so we're going to see if we can jiggle the engine forward without taking the AC out I've got a feeling we're going to have to take it out but we're going to do this step by step uh, so first of all whilst it's jacked up we're going to take the underside bell housing bolts off we're going to take the clutch slave cylinder off the exhaust pipe down pipe off and the flange where it connects to the rest of the exhaust. Now on this car it is particularly difficult because the flange had rotted away and there's a sleeve over that flange now so we're going to have to cut it off. Now unfortunately there's not much room under there to film it uh, but believe me just taking those few bolts out is pretty boring and we're just going to concentrate on the top once we get it down on the floor. We're also at the same time going to take the studs out the engine mounts and I mean the studs just wait a minute I've got one on the floor I'm going to get me just a second here I've just I've just spied an old one we're going to take this stud out by double nutting it so it comes out of the mounting so that when we pull the car where are, we? where are we so that's going to be on one side take the stud out and then when we slip the engine out to move it forward it's going to be a dream We've done it before, I've done different videos and I'll try and put a link in the top. Um, so anything to make life easier, but whilst Curtis is underneath um, pulling bolts off, I'm going to be sort of working on the top and uh, trying to unloosen a few hoses and things. So let's get on with it. So we're getting started with the job and Curtis hasn't done this before but he's good at swinging spanners which is quite good. So. What we've done is, we've given him a couple of uh, trays here. These are draw tidy trays you get from a dollar shop for three dollars. Invalu invaluable for jobs like this. So you can put your spanners in one and all your nuts and bolts in another. Keep them tidy. So whilst he's under there, I'm going to start to take bits and pieces off here. Now, whilst Curtis is working underneath, I'm going to take off all the air lines and some of the fuel lines, connection lines, before we drain the water off and the, we're going to drain the water off last once we've got everything underneath done because we don't want to be playing around with water and the thing is that like yesterday taking the oil pan off when the engine was still hot uh, well that was no fun so we've cleaned it all up so I'm going to start to take off the air cleaner a hose assembly the turbo hoses the intake of the, the turbo hoses down here the, all the connections, the wiring, but talking about wiring, most importantly, you know it's safety first, disconnect the battery. Alright, so let's get on with that. So we're getting on with the job. Uh, just a little tip, when we take off hose clips, I usually push them back down the hose, you know, in the place they came to, and then just tighten them up in the middle of the hose, so you don't lose them, because otherwise you have piles of hose clips all over the place. Now, talking of hose clips, We've got a problem straight away. Look at this uh, air intake down here. You can see it here. Look, somebody's made a piece of uh, pipe to go to the bottom of the air cleaner, and then they've put this good old mighty great big piece of thick rubber going up to here. Well, the problem with that is it's not the it's not the proper pipe, and not only that, it hasn't got a water drain in it, which is really important because. If you're not going to suck up water from your air, air intake, it will go down here and get sucked into this, uh, sucked into the engine. So we're going to have to look at that before we put it on. I didn't realise that was on there before. Now I have a bit of a problem now because I've forced that piece of rubber pipe over that steel pipe, and I need to get that out. Uh, yeah, principally just so I can get to the bolts. So it um, looks like I'm going to have to dismount all this slot here to find out what is under here because I can't even see it oh, 
What a surprise, eh? So that's what we're up to next. You see, this is it when something isn't standard. You get all sorts of surprises, and I hope that that is all going to come off. We'll see. It's funny how just some really simple bolts are such a struggle. <laughs> They've all rusted up and uh, they're three millimetre and of course I haven't got th the, the ball end of the three millimetre won't go, won't go into this socket and it sort of rounds it off. Problem. Anyway, this found out this car actually has a 200 TDI or a 2.5 wiring harness. So we've unplugged the engine harness. Now if you're doing a proper 300 TDI um, the harness comes out with the engine and the gearbox together. So if you unplug the harness for a 300 TDI you've got to go underneath and unplug all the gearbox bits and pieces. So sometimes it's just as easy to undo the alternator and pull the wiring off this way and then uh, tie it all up. It's, it's really up to you. But of course on this one here we've got the AC wiring to take off and uh, a great load of other bits and pieces. So anyway that's just a little problem we're at at the moment. Just one hose is really causing us problems. If it was standard there'd be a hose clip down there and we could take this off and try and get it out. But I've tried one of these um, hose, hose pipe removal tools but the pipe goes so deep it's right back to here and uh, well it's back to where the hose clip is and I just can't get it out so we're going to have to take it off from here and uh, see if we can undo that pipe. So I actually give up on the uh, air intake and just move the pipe out of the way because there was no way I could get it out. I tried to take the three millimeter allen keys, uh, allen headed bolts out of the uh, air intake, um, what, would you, what would we call it, fitting pipe and they were just turning in the wing so that's out. So now I moved on to a new problem which is taking off the radiator mounts which are here which was a really really bad idea from Land Rover. Why they didn't put captive nuts in so you could have just pulled it out was, was, I don't know, crazy idea. But what I want to show you on this is the bolts going through here are very very long and I've sort of got a bit of restricted access to get underneath. So we're going to use the impact gun. try and whiz them out and you see that look that's why we use a little impact because we can get under there and get those out but when we put it back on I'll weld a plate under there so we can get that because the horn isn't attached in here but you can see we're, we're very restricted access and I don't really want to take this bar off if I can help it we're just making more work whilst we're here I can see the condensator the uh, the fan is uh, well it's a bit loosey doosey one of the clips has broke off but um, that fan is attached to the condenser condenser at the front so that means I think that these brackets here are holding the condenser in so if we can get these brackets off we can lift the radiator out without touching too much of the AC now uh, we've had the air we've had the AC degassed in the meantime and I'm going to take the compressor off and move that out, you know, get rid of that and try and block off the hoses so we don't get any dirt into it. So let me get on with this and then that's another thing out of the way. The easiest way to get the coolant out without it going all over the place is to take the hose off the expansion tank. Now you will get a little bit of water from here. Well, you're not going to lose all that much. But then what you do is pass, put a bung into the bottom of the hose and then there's the bung and then put it into there. Now the next thing we're going to do is take off the cap off the top here to let a bit of air in the system and that's going to drain off all the rest of the system. Well not all of the rest of the system but it'll give us access to get the pipes off the top of the engine. So as I said we had to degas the uh, AC, we've plugged up the lines because we need to get to this bolt down here well not really we could have taken it off from somewhere else but it's easy to just to take that one off and of course the fuel the, the lines aren't very flexible at all but we need to pull these back and out the way so the next thing is we can get the fan off get the cowling off take the hoses off the um, oil cooler and then lift the radiator out and we should be able to be on our way 
to uh, get this out we've got to drop the turbo hose off the bottom what else? Oh, the, the accelerator cable off here and then the, two, the 14 millimeter connections for the fuel lines the fuel lines run and they're all connected up, and to, up to the bracket here so, and to here so we, it's easier just to disconnect them from here and here and just swing them up and tie them out of the way now when we, what we do is we get a handful of... T oh, look at that, that just popped off um, we'll get a, we'll get a, a load of tie wraps and cable ties and pull everything out so we've got good access well first of all we've got to look for that bung so fortunately the radiator just lifted out and uh, the, interco the intercooler, well not the intercooler, but the uh, condenser stayed in place on the stand panel, which is good. Seems to be an awful lot of oil down there, I don't know where that's coming from. But anyway, next thing. We've got to take off the tensioner bolt, you know not take it off, but back off the tensioner, so push it this way. Take the belt off, and what we're going to do is undo the three bolts on here on the oil pump and for the power steering and then we're going to take the four bolts around the outside and move the power steering to one side so we don't have to drain the oil and we don't have oil everywhere when we put the engine back on it's just a matter of putting it back together again so I'll show you what that looks like um, like I say we took the AC off that's working well just got that to strap up really uh, one thing we did notice is that it's missing the lifting eyes, which is going to be a complicated problem, I don't think we've got any, and um, yeah, then it's uh, then it's ready to lift out. It's not a big job; it's more fiddly. We had to work around the AC system. Um, yeah, oh, I forgot to say, when you take off the oil cooler pipes, just put a, a, a big bucket underneath to catch the oil because there again, there's no drain. Don't worry about the uh, O-rings that are not present but just make sure that when you take them before you put it back in you take the old o-rings out of the radiator because you can push, you can push them back into the radiator so let's get this uh, power steering pump off and then I think it's about lunchtime so the last job we've got to do is to get the bung out at the bottom of the uh, block and drain the rest of the coolant out and this is quite easy to do with the um, pump off for the power steering. Well, we say it's quite easy. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. It's going to go, just, just wait a minute. We'll have to put a socket on that because that's going to round it off. Yeah, just be careful with that little bung. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. Um, yeah, it's brass. And the earlier ones are hollow and they can snap off. So just be wary of that. I, I put a new bung in there when, it was, uh, when I had the head off. But um, they are using a using a twelve point spanner. Sometimes is not good. So anyway, that's it. And then the rest of the job, yeah, we've put. I found some uh, lifting eyes, front and rear. And then that's it. It's ready to lift out. So we'll lift it out and put it on the stand. Uh, and we'll do a little video as we're lifting it out and show you what the problems we have. But so far, so good. So I missed the critical bit lifting this out, but we're halfway out. But what I wanted to say was, we've just got to make sure that all the wires and before, just as you're lifting it, just go around it, make sure all the pipes and wires are are out of the way, and make sure we haven't got any anything connected up still. And we're all right, we're good to go. So we're going to lift it out. We've got it a little bit too far forward, but it doesn't really matter because it's only coming out. Uh, going back in again, we'll put a different uh, attachment on. So let's lift it out and let's get it under the floor. This is this is quite slow. <laughs> it's a good workout though. I think that is. So there we are, I've got the engine out after a bit of a stressful carry on because the hydraulic jack didn't jack high enough because it's run out of oil. <clears throat> anyway, we've got it out, now I'm going to strip off the front cover, we've got the clutch off the back and the flywheel. Then we can turn all that lot upside down and have a look inside it the seals good at the back but unfortunately it looks like we're going to have to replace that when we put it back in again um, yeah so now we've got to strip off this timing cover and stuff like this and but it gives us an opportunity to have a look around it everything seems to be okay 
but I don't know. I'm going to have to check that to number three rod to make sure it hasn't uh, gone oval, which I probably think it has, and that means we've got to take the head off. So what we're going to do now is pull off the front cover, and hopefully we don't get disturbed anymore because it's like been like a bloody public library this afternoon with everybody coming in, it's getting really annoying. I'm going to have to lock the door one day. Anyway, let's get let's get this front off. Well, it's a good job we had a look at this as well. Of course, look what we've found inside. It's full of dust and rubbish from the belt. Have you got a flashlight there, Curtis? Yeah, so there you can see underneath here how that belt's been running forwards. So we've got that to replace. We might as well put a a genuine kit on that, well, a, an OEM kit, and then do that right as well. We're getting through quite a lot of belts like this now. Anyway, we're going to pull all that front off. We've got the oil pan off, so we're going to have to just undo the bolts for them, and then we can get this front cover off. Sorry. And then we'll, uh, yeah, you can see in there that's where all the dust is. It cleans off easy, but well, it shouldn't be there in the first place. But God knows when this was last changed. Anyway. More to come. Well, peace and quiet at last. I'll tell you something, what a day. This has been like bloody Euston Station in here today, there's been so many people. And just when you're trying to do something kind of technical and get an engine out, um, yeah, kind of busy. So, <clears throat> conclusion of today's work. Well, um, this was the offending rod, number three. And you can see how dark that's been running. That's been running hot for quite a while. Now, what I did was I checked against this housing here, this journal for the big end, and found out that uh, this is oval. It's okay this way, but this way the cap has knocked. So I'm going to have to do some machining. I can salvage that. What they do is they, uh, they take the caps... I can get a cap off, yeah. So what they do is they just take a shaving off the cap here and uh, re-horn out the bore of the big end, which isn't the end of the world. Um, but something I noticed about this engine, I mean, well, first of all, before I say that, let's have a look at the crank. <clears throat> There's the crank. Do you know something? I'll just give it a quick wash over with brake cleaner. And usually what happens with the crank is that the uh, these bearings here, either side, get a little bit damaged. Well, that one's fine. I've got a feeling that that might just uh, re-grind to 10 thou undersize. 0.25 millimetres undersize. But I've got a nice standard crank to put in. But this is one of the things I'm looking at. Look, can you see here? Look at how thick that gunge and dirt is. Look at it. Can you see? I noticed it on here. Look at this here when I take when I took the cover off. Look at that. That's terrible. Yeah. Um I don't know what oil this has been running on. I really don't know. Because you see, when you put a, a diesel oil in, it's got, it's full of detergent. That's why we have diesel oil, it washes everything out. Now usually, like I wash this with the, you know, I was spraying around here with a parts washer. Uh, not parts washer, but uh, brake cleaner, my old favourite brake cleaner. Cleaned all this lot out. But usually, um, engines and things like that inside, you never get that to scummy dirt, it's all nice and clean. Just a quick wipe over and it's clean. So, what caused that? Well, I do think it's cheap bearings. I think it's been done before and the bearings are wrong. Um, but I'm going to have to take the head off. Take all this lot to bits and take the head off. Clean it all up. Um, I'm thinking while I'm talking to you guys because I'm just trying to think what to do. I'm just thinking, well, I've got nothing to lose now but take this outside on the forklift 
and power wash it to death before I actually strip it. Because what's going to be, what's going to change? It's it's full of dirt and debris and muck. And then take all the take all the head off, paint up the block, and make it nice again. The uh, engine mountings are looking a little bit worse for wear here. They they need replacing. The timing belt needs replacing. We caught that one in time. But like I said, we've just got bits everywhere. Look at this. Curtis was a good hand, but well, you know, we just put bits, bit, pile of bits up. So uh, the clutch was okay. It was a Chinese one, which was strange. Um, the clutch fork's got one of those um, old-fashioned type arms on. Um, we're going to take that off and put one of mine on. And again, you can see what I mean about um, taking this out. Take this out car out tomorrow and give it a damn good power wash. And then start again because it's so greasy, it's so dirty, it's filthy. You know, I'm going to have to pay for that mine, but... Anyway, and that's the offending hose I couldn't get out. What a mess about that is. Look at the state of that thing. Well, there's no water drop, dr uh, drain in that. I'm going to have to fix that. Either fix that or not put it back on again. Anyway. We know where we stand. We know what to order. I've got a standard size crank, so I'm going to put a standard crank in. But like I say, I'm going to have to pull the head off again to get the piston out. To get the rod out. Because obviously I can't get the piston from the inside. Because it just won't go through, and besides that, I'd never get the the rings back in again. So we've got to take it out, clean it up, and this time, everything is going to be original equipment or genuine Land Rover. There's not going to be any of these Chinese bearings or anything like that. I suspect the Chinese bearings because, like I said, there was no copper on the finish, on the end inside. So there we go. Now, got to get this done pretty quickly because I've got other jobs coming in. Um, yeah, so I've got. It looks like tomorrow is a big clean up day. We've got Prestone or antifreeze all over the floor. We've got oil all over. Um, yeah, quite a mess. So we I just had enough today, and uh, yeah, it worked out quite well. So, making this Land Rover better, the old catchphrase. Well, yeah, we can. Um, we've got a lot to work with, a lot to do, but it's going to be nice. And, uh, and we did manage to get it over the bull bar by about four inches, so the old lift there, the old elephant lift there, did quite, quite a good job. Uh, we got stuck halfway, which I didn't show you, because, because the damn thing was short of oil, and it wouldn't go up these last few inches, so... We had to drop it back in again and mess about like that. And of course we had an audience, which is more embarrassing. But anyway, it's working out nice. Um, coming on well. I did notice though, look, I'll tell you something while I'm chatting to you. Look at the kink in that uh, hose over there. That's not good. I'll have to do, I might have a look at that while I'm doing it. I don't know what happened there. So many people have been working on this car over the years, but we've lost complete track of who's been doing what. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll, I'm going to wash it all off, and then we'll give it a spray with, uh, with wax, because it's just so filthy to work on. I think I mentioned that before. So, making Land Rovers better. It takes time, and be prepared to be dirty, and get dirty. Or be dirty and get dirty. Who cares? Anyway, we'll talk to you later. Bye.